This is the crazy chef again, and it's March. And what do we remember about March? March is St. Patty's Day. What a great day. 17th of March. I hope everybody celebrates it in a safe manner. Now remember, we're going to make ourselves an authentic Irish dish for March. Now, everybody in the States thinks of corned beef and cabbage as being the staple for St. Patty's Day. But we did a little research and spoke to some real old Irish people and they tell us you use nothing like a shepherd's pie. Now you ask, what is a shepherd's pie? Well, I didn't know what a shepherd's pie was either, but we looked it up and I think we can put it together and it's going to be a good one, folks. Now, shepherd's pie, as you know, sheep, shepherd, herding the sheep in the countryside of Ireland, nice and green, beautiful. So they use lamb to make a shepherd's pie. We're in the States, and of course lamb is well, somewhat difficult to find and uh, very pricey. So to substitute the lamb, we're going to use ground beef. Once using ground beef, all the old timers tell me, that's not a shepherd's pie, crazy chef. Now you're making a cottage pie, which is also authentic Irish. So. It's so good that it's hearty and it'll stick to your rib bones. So here we go. Let's start with the ingredients for the cottage pie. And then do we have a surprise for you? After the main course, we're going to be making a dessert, an authentic Irish dessert, and it is called bread pudding. After we do the cottage pie, get ready for a bread pudding, which is going to knock you out of your socks. So here we go. Let's start with the ingredients for the cottage pie, quote unquote, shepherd's pie. Authentic Irish dish. Now we're going to start, we got to have the ground beef. So here's our two pounds. Now remember, I'm going to give you the numbers as we go along here. Two pounds of ground beef. That's our first one. We're going to have two cups of peas and carrots. Now we bought the frozen ones. You know, we're trying to be simple here and make ends meet. You come home from work, you don't want to start chopping carrots. They're delicious. Frozen peas and carrots. Two cups. Now, onions, you got to have onions. Two whole onions. Now we're talking about an onion about this size, ladies and gentlemen. And you want to finely chop it as much as you can. So again, two onions. Tomatoes. Two tomatoes we're going to have for this recipe. We use Roma tomatoes, but any type of tomato. We use fresh. We have them. They're in season in America year round. I don't know where they come from, but they're in season year round. So two tomatoes chopped. Now you've got to have some beef stock. Here's one cup of beef stock. Now you're going to have to buy the bullion and put it in some boiling water. One teaspoon of the bullion to a cup of boiling water and you got your beef stock. One cup. Now we're going to do a little bit of parsley. So we chop the parsley. We use fresh parsley, but you can buy the dried. It's just as good. And we're going to use one tablespoon of chopped parsley. Salt and pepper as needed. And our next ingredient is the potato. Iris are famous for the potato. Remember the potato war? Anyway, let's not be too crazy here. Let's peel the potato. Let's cut it in fours. When you cut it in fours, it's going to cook quicker. So boiling water, drop those into boiling water for uh, approximately an hour. Put your fork in there. If the potato falls, then you know that it's cooked. Now remember those important techniques. Now, I want to surprise you because I noticed I didn't tell you how many potatoes. Now you must think I'm Irish, I can put in a hundred potatoes. Now be careful. We only want five, five medium potatoes about this size. 
and follow those directions, boiling water, cook them. And before you know it, mash them, you're going to have a product like this, flaky, beautiful, ready to eat. Our last ingredient is going to be butter. We love our butter. At the end, we're going to top our potatoes with butter, but that we'll show you that in a little bit. Now that you have all the ingredients, I think a good thing to do at this point in time is to preheat your oven to 375. That way, when our mixture is ready to go in the oven, the oven will be ready. Good time, 375. Okay, so now let's get these ingredients together. We get ourselves a fry pan here medium to high heat. We're going to put in our ground beef. Ah, here it's sizzling. My favorite assistant is helping us on this today. Beautiful. Let's get that ground beef nice and brown is our first objective here. Since the ground beef came packed we got to loosen it up to get it all nice and brown. Notice we didn't put any oil or butter on the fry pan. First of all, it's a Teflon. They tell me it doesn't stick. Second of all, we got a little grease coming out of the ground beef, which is going to be more than enough. So let's keep working that until we get it brown. Now look at that. Everything, the ground beef is starting to be nice and brown. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we're looking good. All right, so the next step is to take the beef out and put it in a casserole dish. As you can see, we're using a Pyrex dish, three-quart Pyrex dish. Leave the juice in the pan. Take all the beef out. Put it to the side. Boy, I don't know. I think I could eat some of that beef, but we gotta I gotta be I gotta be proper here. I gotta hang on. Now that we have the beef set aside, you notice we got a lot of juice here. A little too much than what we need. So we're gonna discard some of this and just leave a little bit in there for our cooking. Beautiful, look at that. Now that's enough juice. Now we're going to saute our onions that we chopped up. Let's put those in there. Now remember, we want these onions to be translucent. Now I, I don't know what that means. I guess they're translucent. You can see through them. I hear politicians use transparent. Well, but that's another thing. I don't want to get into politics. My father always said, never speak politics or religion. Anyway, translucent on the onions. Let's get this going here. Oh, uh, look at that. Now, that's what I call translucent. Now, somebody might have to look that up in the dictionary and give me a call on that one. But anyway, now we're ready to add the chopped tomatoes and the peas and carrots. Now, once we put those in there, we just want two or three minutes, ladies and gentlemen, to get that all done. Beautiful. Two or three minutes. Stir that in. Nice. Everything is coagulating beautifully there. Crazy chef is going to have to get a Webster's Dictionary. I'm using some big words. This is beautiful. Look at this. Two or three minutes. The peas and carrots. And tomatoes. Ah, that's looking beautiful. And you know, I see the green from Ireland coming out there in the colors. Beautiful. Now we've done that for two or three minutes, so now we're going to transfer this from the frying pan to a stock pot. And there's a reason for that, and you'll see in a second. We're going to transfer all this 
to the stock pot. All right, so we got everything transferred from the fry pan to the stock pot, and I'm going to show you now why. We're going to put in some beef stock. Just pour that cup. Remember that cup we had of beef stock. We're going to pour that in into there, and we got that parsley that we chopped. We're going to put that in there now. Beautiful. Spread that all around. Get that all mixed up, and we're going to simmer this for five, at least five minutes, five to seven minutes. Once we got this going, I can hear it happening here. We got to return the ground beef back into the stock pot. So now you see why we needed the stock pot. Can you imagine all this in that fry pan? We'd be in trouble. So let's return all the beef now back into there. Ah, she does a good job. I think I'll hire her. Beautiful. Look at that, people. Look at that. If it was me, the crazy chef, I'd probably have my hands in there, but she's sanitary. Beautiful. Now we're going to simmer, stir that and simmer at least five minutes. We want to get all those ingredients together. Now remember, this is a good time. If you want more salt, there's a lot of salt in that beef stock, but if you want more salt, this is the time to add it. If you want it a little spicy, this is the time to add that pepper. But otherwise, you got enough in those other ingredients, especially the beef stock, when it comes to the salt. Now let's uh, keep that simmering for at least five minutes. Boy, I, I'd even go a little longer. Put the lid on there and let it simmer. Ah, look how beautiful that is. Now that we've got that all done, we're going to pour it into a casserole dish. Again, we use the py Pyrex, three quart. So we're going to put this all in there now. A little bit at a time. All in there. There you go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I wish you could smell this, folks. My God. It's going to knock you out of your socks. Oh no, that's the dessert that's going to do that. That's coming up. The bread pudding. All right. We got that all put into the casserole dish. Now we're going to spread it out. Beautiful. Beautiful. Press it down a little bit if you want. Now, you know, we said, we used the word pie. Now, when you hear pie, you expect to see some type of a crust. Well, in this instance, the crust is the mashed potatoes. Now, you've probably been wondering, what, what am I supposed to do with all these mashed potatoes? Well, here you go. Start putting the mashed potatoes on. That's going to be your crust, people. We're going to spread it on there. Nice. Beautiful. Make a nice layer all the way across. Get involved. Get in there. Oh, yeah. That's going to make a nice crust and keep all those juices in there. That's what we want. God, you know... He's starting to remind me of my father-in-law. He was a mason. He was a great mason too. It looks like she's doing a little brickwork there. She's, oh man, that's fantastic. Look at that. See how you spread that out? Get those corners tucked in so that the ju none of the juices escape. Perfect, perfect. So there's our final product. We have a little bit left over, but with a little gravy, anybody would eat that. Now the last little step, we want to dot it with some butter. We're going to dot it the top with butter. Now notice 
that the crazy chef, I had to put my signature in here. That's not part of the recipe, ladies and gentlemen, unless you want to put your name, your initials, whatever. Have the children involved to get them to put something in there. Beautiful. But I'm the crazy chef, so I did it this way. Put this butter, spot it around, and remember, our oven, we have it done. Remember, we turned it on. I hope you remember. You didn't leave that oven running, did you? We got it running at 375, and that's Fahrenheit again. I don't want anybody getting confused with Celsius. 375, what do you think? 35, 40 minutes. We're going to put it in the oven and bake it. 35, 40 minutes, and what a great Irish St. Patty's Day you're going to have. Look at that, folks. The crazy chef. We've done it again. This is our cottage pie, authentic St. Patrick's Day. Every Irishman I spoke to said, you got to have the pie. We didn't do the shepherd's pie. We did the cottage pie, but it's exactly the same. Again, beef instead of lamb. Let's see what we got here. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, yes. Look at that, folks. Look at that. What a cut. Oh, i got to have a little more. There's your authentic, oh, my God, that smells delicious. Authentic cottage pie for St. Patty's Day. Very good. Here's the crazy chef. We got our cottage pie in the oven and it's starting to look good. So now we're going to make our bread pudding. Authentic St. Patty's Day. So here we go. Let's start with the ingredients. We're going to start with some bread. Now, the bread can be sliced bread, any type of bread. It can be a day old bread, it can be fresh bread. The main thing is to cut it up into cubes. The more bread you put in, the denser it's going to be. So if you don't like it too dense, leave some bread out. But we say approximately 10 slices of bread to get this in. This is a two quart Pyrex that we are using today. Now, the other ingredients are, we got a quarter cup of butter. This is solid. We'll get to it later. Half a cup of raisins. I, I love raisins. Now look at this. These are golden. You can use the regular raisins if you want. Sun made. But any raisin will work. My favorite are Sultana. The reason why is that I like wine. And these are made from grapes. They dry them. Love raisins. The next ingredient, oh, we've got a little cinnamon here. That looks like a little bit. Let's use a teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon. I don't want you to get sticks of cinnamon, ground cinnamon. And our favorite, you got to have eggs. Now we like them in pairs, two, four, six. Six eggs. Now remember, no ostrich eggs. And no quail eggs, people. Regular, double-A grade chicken eggs. Our next ingredient. Well, you got to be careful. This is three-quarter cups of sugar. Regular granulated sugar. Ah, look at this one. Vanilla extract. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract is the one we're going to use. A little bit of salt, half, half a teaspoon of salt. You can put less. If you got uh, high blood pressure, you might want to put none, but a little bit of salt. Whoa, he milked the cow this morning. We got some homogenized milk here, three cups. I wonder if chocolate milk comes from a brown cow. I always wondered about that when I was a child. This is regular from a white cow. Then you want a pinch of nutmeg for the final product at the end. Now those are our ingredients. You should have them all. If not, play it back and you'll count them all. So now let's go to the stove and start cooking this up, folks. So here we are at the stove. We got the 
milk already put in. We got it at medium heat. Oh, I see the light. Stir it because we don't want it to get too hot too quickly. Now we're going to add the butter. Now we cut the butter up so it melts quicker. So we put that into the milk. Spread that around and slowly turn it. We're going to add a little sugar. We got some sugar there. Oh yeah! My sweet tooth is acting up already. There we go. Slowly stir in the sugar. I love vanilla. We got to have some vanilla somewhere. There it is. Let's stir in that vanilla. Again, this is my favorite assistant. I think I'm going to hire her. She's doing real well. A little salt. Again, remember your blood pressure. Who cared? Once in a while, St. Patrick's Day, you got to go for it. And a little cinnamon. Oh, yeah. Just keep stirring that until it gets nice and warm and the butter is melted. Mmm. Yeah, because we don't want it to curl, so you want it to warm up slowly. Don't be in a hurry. One thing the crazy chef knows, if you hurry, you're going to ruin the dish. So take your time. Even if you need to drink some Baileys, that's all right, because it's St. Patty's Day. You can even put a little Baileys in there if you want. But uh, we're going to stay with this slowly until everything is melted, the butter especially. Well, here we go. We've got a, our Pyrex pan. We're going to put the raisins into the bread, my assistant. Uh, God's got to love her. She's going to heaven for sure. Especially on St. Patrick's Day. I can see it happening. Me and St. Patty's, we were, we were together. Look at that. Beautiful. Now we're going to set this aside. And we're going to bring in a bowl because we're going to have to whisk our eggs. Now remember what I told you. No ostrich eggs. No quail eggs. Nice chicken eggs. I hope a chicken doesn't come out of there. We're going to really be in trouble here today. Look at the way she does that, people. You know, I used to be able to do this with one hand. But that's because I went to culinary school. And they taught us how to do that. Can you crack two eggs with two hands? But she does it the professional way. Ah, the last one. Did you see what she did? She cracked it on the table. See? Now, she's got a whisk, and here we go. She's going to beat those up. Nice. Get everything mixed up there. Don't overbeat it. St. Patrick, he's going to love us for this. We are making one of the best Irish, authentic Irish meals that he's seen in a long time. Now we're going to bring out uh, here's our mixture that we were heating up, the milk and all the spices. Now remember when you put this in to the eggs Remember, this is warm. Now, we don't want scrambled eggs here. So we're going to put it in slowly. I'm going to give my assistant a hand. Maybe I'll even give her a little kiss for St. Patty's Day. But anyway, slowly. Oh, see how she's got control of me? Very slowly. We're going to put this in. And she's going to whisk. Because this heat and those eggs, we're going to have scrambled eggs before you know it. So you might need a helper on this. You've got to keep whisking, slowly, slowly putting this in, incorporating it all together. It looks so far so good. No scrambled eggs yet. But if we get them, and remember we got that bread. So we got it made. Scrambled eggs, raisins, and bread. That sounds pretty good, too. All right. I'm going a little quicker now because the temperature has come down in that mixture of the eggs. 
because they were room temperature. Looking good. Smells good too. I love that vanilla. Ah. You know, sometimes I wonder, could we use vanilla, vanilla ice cream for this? <laughs> it's got the milk, it's got the vanilla. Maybe that's why I'm crazy. All right. Everything's in, at least most of it. We got some out. Well, folks, <laughs> my, my lovely assistant, she slapped me around a little bit because as I was pouring that mixture in, I spilled some. As you can see, made a little mess, so she's upset at me. We gotta, we gotta keep her happy, folks. So now, she's happy again. We got that mixture, we're gonna pour it in. See the way she does that? Now, if she spills some, I got a ride to get mad at her. Ah, look at that, that's a professional. She's gotta be Irish there somehow. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh my God, I could eat it like that. It looks like a soup. Clam chowder maybe? <laughs> I don't know. After you have all that in there, you want, it to, you want it to sit for about five minutes so that bread soaks that juice up. And then we're gonna bake that 375 for 25 to 30 minutes. And then when that's all done, we'll show you. You're gonna have a bread pudding that'll knock your socks off. And St. Patty, I think he's gonna be at your house to have some of this. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're ready now to put it in the oven. Remember, 20, 30 minutes, 375. We're gonna to top it off with a little bit of nutmeg, sprinkle it around to give it a nice flavor. While she's doing that, I wanted to say, we put raisins in this. But I've heard people say, you know, instead of raisins, we could have used little chocolate chips, semi-sweet, instead of the raisin. That would give you a full, different flavor. But this time is this, and now we're ready to put it in the oven. And when it's all done, oh man, I can smell that nutmeg. Ah. Oh. Feel like it's fresh grated. So now, let's put it in the oven for 25, 30 minutes. Is that what I said? I don't even remember what I said because I've been drinking a little old Bushmills here, 21 years old, and let me tell you, it's delicious. But we gotta move on here. We're gonna put this in the oven. And there you have it. Bread pudding at its best, delicious. Now remember, some people say instead of using the raisins, you could use chocolate chip, semi-sweet, makes it delicious also. You, we let this cool down now, you can refrigerate it after a while, eat it out of the refrigerator, eat at room temperature. You can put it in the microwave high for 10 seconds, heat it up, reconstitute it, you can't beat it. Unbelievable. You want to put a little whipped cream on there? Mmm, that doesn't sound too bad either. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. Look at that consistency, people. Look at that. Put that on the plate. Look at that. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ah. And again, happy Patty's Day to all of you. Do we have a surprise for you? After the cottage pie, bread pudding, my God, I think I got a little room for some Irish whiskey. Old Bushmills is my favorite, 21 year old, but you can have one of the other ones. They got Jameson, they got Murphy's. You can use one of those. But anyway, we're gonna start. We got a teaspoon of sugar. We're gonna put that in my cup. This is my Irish whiskey cup, ladies and gentlemen. You can use any type of cup. We got a shot of Irish whiskey. Ah, it's a shame to make coffee out of it. You know, you should drink it like that. But anyway, we got some coffee. We're going to put the coffee in there. Almost to the top. And, oh, my assistant gave me a little spoon. I guess she wants me to mix it up. Ah, yes, yes, yes. 
Now I'm going to cheat, ladies and gentlemen, because I can't wait to get real whipped cream. I'm just going to get, look at that, a non-dairy. That's healthy. Just shake it up a bit. Put that on top. My God, we're in heaven.